Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to another edition of Winning Ways. Could be quite difficult today. We're going to... We've got a, a brand new apprentice uh, producer, um, uh, Spielberg. Spielberg went on Spielberg's, Spielberg's gone on holiday. Holiday, and, I mean, sorry. And, and I can tell you, without Spielberg, this could be some type of show. Well, no, they, they, they're pretty jacked up. Our team. They? They're more jacked up yeah. than the Arsenal defence. Yeah. De know. Denver, okay. You want to talk about Arsenal? Um, one all, was it? Yeah, for, for, for about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> then said I turned off my television. Yeah. I can't believe it. But uh, just You can't get, believe it. I can believe it. What did I tell you last week? No, you were I right. I said you will get a draw at best. Yeah, you better at rugby. You're you rugby, you're no, very I'm rugby, I'm outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. You, you're the, but I'm still standing in last man standing. Yeah, but interesting, James, the last one standing, there were three guys in last week. This was week seven, okay? Yeah. The three guys week six, there were three guys standing. Yeah. They all went out, so they all got followed on to the week seven. They all got wrong again. So uh, it's still Larry Weinstein, Gary Leach, and uh, Skipper, who's Ernie Wallace, yeah. the three of them. And, and both times, Gary Leach has had it in his hands. He's had the other two were out, and this team still had to play. Liverpool, and Everton. Drew, and Everton this week. Everton. Now, remember, James, they've got to find, they can't use a team they've picked before. No. So they got But problems. this week, James, you stayed in, didn't go for Chelsea? No, I didn't go for Chelsea. Okay, so you're still in? Yeah. Okay. So I went for Burnley with one, and that's Burn Burnley kicked me out the first week, the first time. I went for them, I thought these what guys are you got from Burnley area or something? Yeah, well, you know what, when I looked at the team, I thought, well, they've got to be able to win this. They, they, they didn't get a penalty in the box, which yeah. they should have got. Yeah, there was an absolute cool. blatant penalty. The ref standing from you to me away, yeah. and he never blew it. And he was taken down, side down. They were, they were, with, uh, were they West Ham? Uh, Burnley, I think it's, it a, it's a, been a long weekend. Okay, but James, okay. just uh, talking about the top, Man City, fantastic, seven goals. You know, uh, maybe the defence needs to tighten up. They led in two, it was 3 2 at one stage. Spurs broke their hoodoo. They, they, they etched out to win. They did know? etch out to win. But yeah. uh, what annoyed me was I watched uh, the big derby Liverpool Man oh. United. That Man United, Mourinho, up to. Park the bus. Park the bus. Like Park the bus. Yeah. He had one he shot is on so target. Baderless, it's not even yeah. possible. One All he wants to do is not lose. He well, they should, have, they should have got beat. Liverpool were the better side. Much better side. De Gea, De Gea whatever his name is, helped them. But De I couldn't believe the best, they parked him. De Gea is the best goalkeeper in the world. That's what yeah. saves Man United. Yeah. And all those Man United guys out there, you're lucky you got De Gea because the rest of them at the back... What, what, are, what are United going to win Jones this year? Jones and them are useless. What are they, what's United going to win this year? Nothing. As usual. I just want you to get you to stir the <laughs> pot. Nothing. I same as Spurs, you, same I, as Austin. I told you with, uh, I said to you Manchester City a long time ago. Yeah. I said that actually the two Manchester clubs, Manchester City, Manchester United. But you've like, changed and your Spurs, mind. And Spurs, uh, Spurs will Do be... You, a little interesting stat. When Man United played Liverpool on the weekend, Man United had played seven teams from the bottom nine and Liverpool played seven teams from the top nine. Yeah. And, and it showed. It showed. Yeah. All right, Jim, what about the horses? No, well, well Rugby. Did you watch the Sharks get beaten by the Stormers? It okay, was ridiculous. It, didn't, uh, it was a bit of a dead rubber, but James, All right, let's talk about this weekend. We've got the, the semi-finals coming up, okay? Mm. And um, I think the Sharks have got to play the Blue Bulls here. Correct, 5 o'clock Saturday. They've got a big problem. Big game. I'm telling you, the Blue Bulls will give them something improve, to think about. because it. Mitchell's... It coaches are everything. Yeah, yeah, John Mitchell. Mitchell's made a but huge But, uh, you know, we'll have the, the Twins back, and we'll, we'll have a good team... It's, uh, you know, contracted players can't play. Yeah. Beast couldn't play. Beast sat there watching him. He couldn't play. But anyway, but we've all got the same problems. Be, I think all four games are tight. Yeah? Well, all two games with four teams are very well, tight. Well, I reckon the Lions will win. Uh, trouble with the Lions is the fly half. He's weak. Yeah. That, um, the blonde boy. He is weak. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, without so the Yankees incumbent. there, if we had but Elton Yankees there... Uh, All over. Give me the blonde boy. Yeah. <laughs> give me the blonde boy. Yankees. You like the blonde boy. Yeah, Yankees um, what is about the, What about the polo yesterday? Polo? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice jersey. Yeah. Month, uh, yeah. Polo neck. That, what are you polo talking about? I don't watch polo. No, no. <laughs> I haven't got a Land Rover. I'm just seeing strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> but I know we won the cricket. We won the cricket. Yeah. yeah. Without, did we lose a wicket eventually? Not that I can think no, of. I don't, don't think we did. Um, oh, was there any other sporting highlights? Right, golf, golf, the guy won again. Terrell Hatton, unbelievable, made a birdie on the last to win again. Win what again. Player. Yeah, you? the boy can play. He's dead. But he's, he's got coach. a bad attitude. Has he? Yeah, his attitude will get him. Okay. No Let's, uh, oh, well, funny enough, watching golf, I watched, who's this new young Spaniard? I'm sorry, you John golf. Rahm. John Rahm. Did you see him lose his temper? Yeah. He lost him with the cameraman. He's got a problem with it. <laughs> and the, the presenter said, you know, 
you've got to be like Tony Johnson, even tempered. He's always in a bad mood. <laughs> that was very funny. He's always in they a bad mood. They love picking on Tony Johnson. They, they, pick on him. they love picking on him. But uh, he has lemons and vinegar for breakfast, Tony Johnson. He's a misery, man. No, sure. Absolute misery. Absolute misery. But some of the best golfers around are miseries. Yeah, that's Now, true. I've seen that Tiger Woods is back swinging the club. He looks like, a, he looks like yeah. me on the range. He's using irons now just yeah. to... Yeah. do his clothes, yeah. and then he's uh, trying to hit some clubs as well. <laughs> but James, let's get on to some racing because there were no stakes races. Well, before we do that, yes. let's tell everyone what we've got in your call. We've got a very, very interesting article by Andrew Bond or an interview by Andrew Bond, Raf Shake and Kurt yes. and all yeah. the boys about the tracks in Quasimodo. Yeah, it's a good now. update. Just to keep everyone involved and keep them informed. But you want to go to the racing? Okay, let's go to racing. Right, well, three to follow. We're going to the Vol and Tuesday uh, race two. Uh, there were a couple of first timers in the race, but the one that really caught the eye was a Chud Pot filly owned by Anton Proctor, one of the stalwart breeders in KwaZulu Natal. I know Judy was up there to see the horse run, and um, very, very unlucky. Let's go and pick this one up at the start. Um, she was bred by Main Chance. And she's out of a pivotal mare. This filly could be really worthwhile. She sort of fly jumps out the pens there, left. She's about. Yeah, I can see his colours. Length she's in the middle. Them. That's right, length off them. It does look to compare to the white race. spots and the red cap, so everyone can pick it up. Correct. You know and I know his colours, but not everyone. Yeah, not everyone. I will, we'll, it's got the uh, white face, this chestnut. Now, we're watching the race. Up the middle is, is Carmelita. I thought this would be a, a tough horse to beat. You know, a lot of speed with white winter showed speed. And down the inside, Forever Joy showed a lot of speed. Even a horse like uh, the fourth horse, who was Nautic Spirit, that runs a very good race in uh, Vernus Colors. But the horse we found, if you count them numerically, it's sixth. Sixth, yeah. But the white face is just inside the dark horse here. It's about um, six positions, about three lengths off the leader at this stage. And they go pretty quick up front. But at this stage, she doesn't look like she's got much to come, but she runs into terrible trouble here. Here she goes straight up the backside of the um, filly in the uh, gets filly, worse. serum filly. And here she just has to check right off their heels and uh, she just get punched out, hands and heels from here to the finish. But watch the way this filly runs on. It just it gets a smack and just hands and heels all the way to the line. I think never, it a clear had, run with a one. Never had any room. Yeah. Very, very unlucky indeed. And, um, you know, um, uh, Waishong just couldn't find the gap. But uh, this filly certainly won for your black book. She will improve. Let's go to uh, Durbanville, uh, 11th of October. This was uh, the Wednesday meeting. And um, we picked out uh, one that was race uh, number one at Durbanville, 1,200 meters, drawn on the outside. Joey Ramsden's 3 million rand filly, talk of the town. She's bred by Backworth, another KwaZulu Natal. What's her pedigree? Um, uh, yeah, she's by VAR. Yeah. Out of um, Street Cry Mare. That's right. Uh, Street Cry, the dam of Winks. Uh, great the sire of Winks. The uh, sire of Winks. Sire of Winks. Great broodmare dam sire. So yeah. this mare's got a lot of potential. You can see it being hustled over. Uh, I think it's Mr. Carty riding it. Four or okay. five deep being hustled over trying to get a position. He does a good job from the outside draw. But the pace is on. Funny enough, the, the winner goes to front night and winter from the Vaughan Marshall stable. I thought the stable mate in Bryn Russell's colours, Red 8, who's beautifully placed in third as we count them here, would uh, would win, uh, win this race, but uh, not when the keeps rolling. But have a look at the horse James has found here. Talk of the town in the Eustace Silks. Yeah, she's uh, one off the fence now. Carty got into a great position, and he seems to look like he's going to come out here. Here you can see it just go past the 600 meter board with a white face and the sheepskin noseband, black cap, black sleeves. Now she goes and switches in. She's about eighth at the stage or ninth, and she switches in. There's not much room there, but she's going to. Uh, stop picking them off, and Carty just keeps her, keeps her moving, keeps her rolling. She gets a bit of a gap here, and now she gets chased along, given a little backhander or two, and she runs on really, really stoutly, this filly, to get up uh, and run third. She nearly runs second. Super, super run. Very good run, Once James. a penny dropped, this yeah, filly will Give be... it a draw, penny yeah. drop, very yeah. hard to oppose. Yeah. And Jerry Ramson, you know, he's a master. Yeah. And uh, these fillies... Takes his time, lets yeah. him find themselves. These fillies yeah. will improve, no doubt, with them. Right, we're going to go to uh, Turfentine on Saturday. And uh, we go to the race three. A thousand meters on the inside track, up the hill. Watch this lot. 
Uh, Waiho Mawing has one that they backed, which is a trippy, comes from miles behind to win. And one they didn't back, which was a Rocker, Rocker Rochelle bred by our mate David Hepburn Brown at Yemel and Arda. And uh, Carl Zechner wrote it. That's in the light blue colours. It uh, ends up about third or fourth last on the fence. That's right. As you can see, we'll get a better picture when the camera changes. There it is in the blue. The winner is in Hassan Adams' colours. And this is the horse that would uh, found support. Flowers from a brook. And just touch on Hassan's horse at the moment. It's three from the right. It's completely out of the race. How it wins is fantastic. This is a great win. But the horse we found runs a very good race as well. It's called Empress Rock. Probably a ninth, tenth. And uh, a long way back, James. Yeah, well, you'll see Flowers from a Brook is about three lengths behind it at this stage and gets her wake up. But this filly, they haven't put the pressure on her yet. She just asked her to run with her hands. But Flowers from a Brook got one smack. It took off like a rocket. Now, they're both going for the same gap. And Flowers from a Brook gets her first. But uh, Empress Rock runs on really well under an absolute hands ride. Go and watch this. Go and watch her head on on this race. You'll see that this ran a cracking good race. So Waiho's two runners in the race, both worth having a good look at. They um, really look like they could uh, win some races. He's certainly the winner was highly impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, you know, that was, that's a trippy. Mm. Um, she wasn't cheap, and funny enough, she was bred by Hassan and uh, Dale and Chin Sammy and Pravin Naidu own a share with him, so they've obviously taken shares. Good luck to them. Let's hope it works out well for them. Right, uh, let's move on to uh, This Shouldn't Happen. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh gosh, this mare is so pretty. Ow. Dang. Ow. Dang. You little witch. Did you have that on video? That's awesome. If you'd like to watch uh, the full unabridged version, of this shouldn't happen. You go to the Gold Circle YouTube icon and uh, go onto the Gold Circle website, go onto the YouTube icon. You'll see the whole thing. It's uh, quite amusing this week. We've got a fantastic clip. But uh, we're going to move on and see what the Plum of the Week looks like. Blue and they're followed by Sylvain. Outside the 400 metre marker, parades in, stays to the centre of the track. Flo Joyner's trying to put on the pressure towards the outside, Diamonds Forever. It still parades in from Flo Joyner as they get to the last 100 metres and parades in now, quickens up and parades in, won't get caught. Parades in to win it and to win it by about two. Sylvain runs on for second. Third place will probably go to Rose Hill and then Flo Joyner. Well, as a Karari filly, she ran second twice for um, Byron Foster at um, yeah. Nell's Yard here yeah, in no, Sommerfeld. Yeah. And she had been in front at the 200 both times. I thought the 1,000 on the poly track would be absolutely She went down very it. well and she won she very comfortably. She went down. She looks yeah. like a really Decent nice filly. Uh, you could have got 13 to 10 or even 14 to 10 on Interbet at the death, uh, um, which was an 10. amazing price. This filly looked like a good thing in this race. And uh, Gareth Wright did the business on her. She went to the front. Never looked in doubt. And she's never. a filly that you can follow as well. I think that she's going to improve. Yeah. We, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with uh, Current Affairs. 
future of all betting is online and mobile. Interbet, we're the pioneers of online and mobile betting in South Africa and continue to lead the way. But when you win one of these big races, everything else becomes meaningless. It's just something, that thrill of adrenaline is just incredible. Interbet is where the serious professionals bet. Right, well, let's go and have a look at uh, our Magic Billions slot, which is uh, current affairs. Big week for them. They had um, uh, Lady Val won, which uh, we bought as a weanling in the Magic Million sales. Mm. And, uh, you know, you know uh, for those of you who don't know, movement at the top. Wonderful news that uh, uh, Coolmore Australia have employed Vin Cox. Vin I, Cox. I, I think it's unbelievable. Great it's, move. You know, great so, move for him. And uh, yeah. Vin has been a great friend of ours. And yeah, you know Vin. what? He's a great friend to South Africa. He's done a lot for South Africa, Vin. He's a, he's a top man, and uh, I'm not surprised at all that he, he got the job. It's a fantastic job, you yeah. know, Coolmore, Australia. I see people like Appleby are sending, I mean, uh, not Coolmore, Godolphin. Sorry. Godolphin, yes. Godolphin, I apologize. Godolphin, yeah. Appleby and them are sending Godolphin horses that are winning every week up there. So, well done to him. And uh, his place as the, the main honcho now is going to Barry Bowden. Managing fantastic. director. So, Barry's involved. Barry, Barry you've got to get Barry. a position, Barry. Yes. Well done to Barry Bowden. He now takes over from Vin and they're both wonderful people been out here many times support our racing they race horses in this country yeah. wonderful people so great moves at, at Magic Millions well it shows you what Magic Millions does not only do they race horses they place horses in this country they yes. look after the South Africans unbelievably well yeah. and um, it's wonderful to have them as uh, headline sponsors on the show and um, so let's hope that the, the good news continues and it will continue because we're going to go and have a look we've got um, all types of news, but no features in South Africa this week. So um, we're going to be talking. Firstly, the biggest news was the Everest. We've got to talk about yeah, that. Absolutely, James. And uh, owned by, the comment was, everyday people. Yeah. Fantastic, James. These guys all got involved with the Snowdens. Well, and there's an ex-cricket coach. Yes. Yeah. He's got a share in it. Um, a builder. Yeah. Uh, the, the, all types of people, yeah. pharmacists. Pharmacists, yeah. yeah. Everyday people all got involved in the source. They bought it and it's won the well, Everest. Well, what happened was James Herron bought it. Sorry. Yes. yes, correct. James Herron was the guy who bought it. And uh, he's, he's been involved with a lot of top horses. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, pleased to say that uh, whenever let's, I go out there to sales, I have a chat with James and he, 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 he's... Okay, he's, let's listen. We haven't played the sting. Should we play the sting? Let's play this Is thing. Is it this thing? This thing. There we go, our sponsors, Magic Millions. As we, uh, before their the, the, uh, sting, we spoke about uh, Vin and Barry. Well done to both of them with their promotions. But James, getting back to this, this the Everest now, it's, it's huge money. It's, it's 10 million Aussie dollars, which is the most money for a turf race in the world. I think that what, from what I read, the first three horses are the only horses that got prize money. No, no. Did they all uh, get prize yeah, money? Yes, right down. Uh, was... I thought that they, the first three no, horses only the, got the prize money. They, no, they got massive money. No, no, they, get, they went down the list where people running 10th and 12th were getting money in. So the Hootson that uh, Jeff Lloyd rode, they got... They ran 4th or 5th? They ran 4th or 5th, yeah. somewhere like that. But uh, 
Chichuago was an unlucky horse. Mm. Um, came from stone last to run fourth. Never seemed to really get a clear run at them. But R this winner, Redsill, James, by Schnitzel. Schnitzel's a fabulous stallion. Okay, now this is what's so interesting. This horse went through the uh, sale as a weanling for 45000 And then went on the Magic Million sale. And James Harron bloodstock. And James Harron, I think he does a lot of work for Gay Waterhouse. He well, works for the Snowdens. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, the big bloodstock He's agent. He's a big bloodstock yeah. agent. He yeah. bought this horse for 120000 He sold people shares. It shows you this is how the syndication works. Sold him 5% for $6,500. Okay? So... He made his commission out of it because he does the work. He does obviously. all the work, He's yeah. entitled to, to make his sure. commission out of it. And then he runs a syndicate for mm. these guys and he obviously charges them something. But they've done, this so was won $7 million James, in stakes. Yeah, just, just have a look at my, my brother got involved. He knows nothing about horses. He got involved in Australia. His wife took 5% of a horse by Manhattan Rain. She will reign. No, no, no. She will reign is a slipper um, winner. They yeah. wish they owned that. But the, the filly they owned won its first three, including the group two. And the same thing was syndicated. And uh, it, it, it was a top filly. They sold it at Magic Millions the other day for 950000 They paid 100 for it. They each Beautiful. put in 5000 20 yeah. of them. Yeah. They had so much fun. Yeah. And uh, they each got 45000 or something like that back for their, for their investment. And they can reinvest and have fun with it, it. And that's what it's all exactly. about. So it's but, James, this is... Uh, well, just what was interesting was this horse was sold at the Magic Million sales, okay, and uh, James Harron bought it. But at the same, uh, uh, the sale last year, Magic Million's main sale, three, at 37 schnitzels were sold for an average of $331,000. Wow. Yeah. So schnitzel is, when well, he broke all stallion. records yeah. last year, he's leading by so far yeah. this year, it's not even he's, funny. He's just a great stallion, James. Um, and uh, you got uh, all these people that are uh, involved in the in the thing. It's over a Rubiton mare. Well, there's a schnitzel in the country. Mark de Cox got a Group One winning yeah. grey horse by Schnitzel. Yeah. I think he paid two hundred thousand for it. Yeah, very and good. Got horse. the big chestnut by Schnitzel as well. Yeah, so yeah. great stallion. So that that is fantastic for these guys, and uh, it's it's. Uh, it's getting to the stage where they're putting these big races on worldwide, James. Well, they pay, they um, got thirty-three thousand people through the uh, turnstiles, and from all reports, it was a wonderful day, and it was a day that you need in racing to bring people along. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm Good. absolutely fine. No, I'm just wondering about it. You know, there's a lot of noise coming. You know? yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. Banging yeah. my okay. shoe. No, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, at least you've got long pants on today. Yeah, I had to wear long. So you can't have blown away. So, James, that, that's happening, but let's talk about other horses that are doing well. And as you know, we've got Duke of Marmalade in this country. Duke of Marmalade had a horse called Traffic Jam, won the Group 2 over a mile and a half. Did run, okay. did run fourth in the Group 1 the time before. It's 34th stake winner for Duke of Marmalade who stands in this country. Fantastic news. Yeah, mile and a half Shanti. Um, so, Greg, he keeps going Duke of Marmalade. But the other horse that now uh, had his first big prize was uh, Flower Alley. Right. He um, had a horse called Bullard's Alley, won a mile and a half as well on the wet track and the Canadian International. Yeah. So group one. A, yeah, it's a group one. and um, One by ten and a half. He yeah. beat Idaho and Erupt. That's two right. Top, Erupt won last year's Canadian International. Yeah. Top horses. Top, top horses. Obviously goes on the, on the turf and yes. uh, goes a mile and a half, which um, is fantastic for the Fly Alley team. So uh, that's um, good news for them. Talking about uh, syndication, let's get back to syndication. Gareth Pepper, you know, he now runs syndicates in, yes, right. um, in, in Singapore. Singapore yes. you know, he was, was a tra I think he still do, does track an answer on an ad uh, hoc Every now and then he, he does, yeah. yeah. But he's got the syndication going and he's involved with... Um, um, a, a trainer called Stephen Gray. Yeah, I know him well. He's a New Zealander. Yeah. Very, very good guy. I had a couple Must of meals be one with Stephen. one of good New Zealanders. He's a superb guy. Him yeah. and his wife and I uh, went for, for a meal. He's a good trainer. He's a good guy. Uh, uh, Pepper does his RT work for him and, and helps syndicate. And there's another guy. They've got another mate. I forget his name. He's also a Kiwi. Very clued up there. They're very James strong. James Peters, I think they use no, as well. No, oh, he's, he's another uh, trainer. He's a young trainer. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a young yeah, Englishman yeah, who's a trainer. Yeah. This guy's a Kiwi who helps purchase the horses with him. But 
Good people, James, and doing very well. Well, this is their first public syndication, and they had a whole lot of people that have never been involved in horses before. They put this horse together, and the first off of the syndicate won. So wonderful for Gareth. And um, it just shows you, the horse won a barrier trial, and that's why they bought it. It won a barrier trial in New Zealand. Yes. And they bought it, and it won a barrier trial in, in um, uh, Singapore. Singapore. So now we can talk about barrier trials. We're not far away. What First uh, of December. First of, first of December. First We're going to have a barrier trial. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I yeah. saw this morning that um, Alistair Gordon's here galloping horses. And yeah, people, people are getting their horses you know, that ready. That come, could be a barrier trial. Well, the point is it could be at the barrier trial without Correct. having to pay for the horses to come That's down right. here and everything, you know. You right. took any back to Stephen Gray. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a real nice guy. You know, when you meet nice guys, he's, he's going he's to have a lot of success with syndicating. He'll do very well. Yeah, the other New Zealand I know is a real nice guy, Alan Sutherland. Steve Davis. Steve Davis. Grant yeah. Burns. <laughs> we got, we got, we got, a, few, got a few. Of them. We got a few I'll Kiwi mates. More than I thought. Yeah, no, I we got a few it, good yeah. Kiwi yeah. mates. Yeah. You and I, we're very lucky. Yeah. Um, James, what Stuart about Be Stuart McKenzie? Yeah, Stuart yeah. McKenzie, whoever yeah. he is. <laughs> James, uh, on a sad note, Patrick Haslam died at 69. He was he'd, he had trained a couple of Group One winners. His son had taken over. He hadn't been well, but. Uh, Tributes are flowing in for him. Yeah, good yeah, guy. He was a, a very nice chap and a good trainer. Yeah. Arrogate going to Judmont uh, to stand off the Breeders' Cup. Well, they own him, yeah. Yeah, they own him, but that he's going to Judmont. They only got one stallion there at the moment. Why they, don't they put it to their top filly and label? They own both. They might, they might, it might easily. You never imagine, know. Being, imagine being uh, an owner and you, you start off with the likes of Dancing Brave, you get up to Frankel, mm. Enable. Yeah. Arrogate, and I've left out a slew of slew group of one yeah. winners. Yeah. Incredible success, eh, James? Yeah, but they, they deserve every bit of success. They breed well. They, they not only breed well, they are fanatics in the game. They spend huge, huge amounts. And without, without them, horse racing wouldn't be what it is. Yeah. You know, Ted, no Ted, Teddy's, the, Teddy's the manager, old mate of yeah. us from, Teddy from America. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, our best mate is um, John, who's in charge in Kentucky. So, okay, there, there we go. John from Kentucky. Yeah. Dr. Okay. John Chandler. Don't okay. you know John Chandler? I, don't know. I know a few Johns. Yeah. You know, John, could it could have been John, John Costa. You know? yeah. uh, he's uh, the main man there at okay. Jonah Bell Farms. Yeah. James? Uh, okay. Our man, Aidan O'Brien, yes. is now one behind Bobby Frankel. Group on Windows they say that season. he'll get to 30 this year. Yeah, he's, he's got now, the British he, Quipco he, 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 Champions. What's inter interesting? Yeah, he's got that uh, Ascot meeting coming up. Yeah. What's yeah. interesting, James? He was 1, 2, 3, 4. In a classic. The last time it was done in a classic, what year? Well, it wasn't a classic. It was a two-year-old classic. It was yeah, a two well, well, yeah, Yes, correct. What yeah. time what was the last time it was done? I think it was Michael Dickinson in the Gold Cup. No, that was, he read the first five first in the five, Hennessy. Yeah. He had yeah. the first five in the Hennessy. No, on the, on the flat, yeah. 1822. 1822. 1822. But people have had group one top four. And uh, it was done by old man Botti in the Oaks. He had five of the six runners. Yeah. And it was also done in Australia by uh, Kiwi, who trains Winx. Uh, his name escapes me for the moment. He's done. He yeah, did, he's got a good name. Yeah, he's yeah. got a good name. He did one, two, three, four. But interesting, when you get these uh, O'Brien bringing these horses through, people say, well, they've got to be Galileos. They've got to be Galileos. One, two, three, four. You know the interesting stat? Warfront was the side Warfront of Warfront first and fourth. Yeah. Scat Daddy second, second and, third. and third. yeah. There's a Scat Daddy that I know of in South Africa. I watched it work this morning. Charles Laird has got a Scat Daddy. Be interesting to keep an eye on that, eh? Yeah. Absolutely. Lovely also. I watched well, it work. Um, Caravaggio is the Scat Daddy. Yes. He's a, yes. Uh, they He's a flying a champion. machine. Yeah, flying machine. Flying and he'll machine. make it as a side too. Scat Daddy, they, they bought a lot of Scat Daddies, um, um, the Coolmore bunch, because they realized that he's the source of speed they need to put onto all these That's Galileo right. mares Correct. and that that they've got. And um, Sadler's Wells and all those type of things. Do you know there was a four to seven favorite who ran last in the race? In the Dewhurst, an unbeaten yeah. horse of yeah. Sir Michael Stout, yeah. owned by the same boys, yeah. owned by Judmont Farms, yeah. and it uh, yeah. it fell away. There's they something sort of was it came back lame, lame behind. Was lame behind. Yeah. Now, there's something I, don't, I haven't chatted to you about, but I think that you, you should know. A guy called Dr. Nash at Kentucky, uh, he's, he's one of those uh, professors of um, uh, microbiology or whatever. He's found, invented a microchip, okay, which can ascertain whether a horse has certain um, equine diseases. He's been working on them. Oh. Within 25 minutes, 
you put a drop of the horse's uh, body Blood. fluid, oh, body on, fluid. On, a, on a screen, on a, slide. on a microchip, and you slide it into a little machine, and it will tell you whether the horse has got EVH or any of those dis diseases. African horse? Anything. Well, this is the most unbelievable thing. They call it path tracker. Now, he says two years from now it will be commercial, but he says why it's so important is because they started working on it when they had those things at fairgrounds, you know, where they got that yes. EVH and they never got the mm. results back for 25 days because they had to go to a laboratory, which is 100 miles away. And at a cost. Now. Yeah, and then everyone got it and it was closed down. He says now he's working on something that they'll be able to do within 25 minutes. And is you it know only what? A that's year going off? to save you. Alan, we should make it a bit closer, work on, so we get well, our protocols sorted out. Well, it, it will help all of us, yeah. everyone. And um, it was phenomenal reading about it. Mm. Uh, he says it's going to make huge differences to dope testing, because he says they're going to be able to test a horse there and then. Okay. Of course. Yeah, for various su substances. He says that he can test a range of 10 substances at this stage. So they'll be able to put on non-steroidals or something like that, or steroids, or straight onto the screen, and you'll get the result in 25 minutes, which means that um, you could end up being able to uh, change the result of a race in moments. But more importantly, you can stop the spread of any viruses right there at source. Which Dr. Is Nash, eh? Dr. Where's Nash. Where's he, Kentucky? Amazing no. man, Dr. Nash. I read about it on TDN. Uh, it was a most amazing article, and it shows you where we're going. He says you're going to be able to read it off a tablet like a cell phone like tablet. You're going Fantastic. to be able to read the results off it. Well, we've got to go that way, James, with yeah. humans and with equine. Just touching on Whiskey Baron. Yeah. Had a slight hiccup in work. And, yeah, I uh, saw that. Uh, sad, found, sad about that. Found to be a lame behind, and it puts the, the whole Hong Kong thing uh, under pressure. But well, he can't have his prep run that he needed that's to That's it, have, he needed you know. to have it on Friday. So yeah. that's the latest on Whiskey Baron. We will keep you posted. James, one of our graduates of the week for Magic Williams was your horse. Yeah. Lady Vell, lovely filly, Jim. Yeah, very, very good filly. And, um, you know, uh, high chaparral. Uh, he's he's flying in the stallion yeah. log. I looked yeah. at the stallion log this morning. Yeah. He's absolutely flying. And the dam is a sister to a horse called Intelligence Cross, which O'Brien, I think they th thought it was their second best sprinting colt this year, last year. In, um, Yours doesn't yeah. look like that much of a speed horse. I, I know, thought you want a trip, yeah. eh? it's like the father. No doubt, yeah. yeah. No doubt. It's going to go father. Trip. Lovely for you. Well, that, that is our graduate of the week. It's, it's not up on the slide, but I can tell you, Lady Vell was uh, one of the Magic Millions graduates. What are the news you got, James? That's the news as far as I'm concerned. There's yeah, no, so, no uh, other news. And, um, no sales. I know that we're building up. Uh, I know Mickey's having a sale, uh, a ready-to-run sale. Mickey yeah. Goss and his I hear, that, I hear there are a couple of ready-to-run sales on the, on the go. On the yeah. go. They're going to get ready. So we keep you posted. A bit quiet with, with regard to sales at the moment, but uh, I do know some will have been about the 23rd, 24th, they're having a sale. Yeah. You know. okay. Oh, this month? Yes. Okay, so that's like a week. Two weeks' time. Yeah, two weeks', two weeks time. time. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we're going to take a break, and we're going to be back when your call with um, the track report from Gold Circle. Well, let's go and see the report that Bonsi's put together on the Gold Circle tracks. Very interesting, should give you an insight. Right, Raf, it's very, very easy for people to be critical because it's human nature. But when things go right and you see the way in which people have embraced the surface of gravel this year, 
then credit has to be given and credit has to be due. So can you tell us more or less what have you done different this year that has made the surface so much better for racing? Yes, Andrew, as you rightfully said, last year we had a lot of criticism about our track. We still maintain that the track was obviously not good looking, but it was safe for horse and the rider. This year we were tasked by our racing committee chairman to do things differently. And if you recall in 2014 when the poly track was introduced, races were split. We used to have four on the grass and four on the poly. This year what we've decided to do is to have full turf meetings. So on 1st of Jan we had the full turf meeting since the inception of the poly track giving the turf managers time to get the turf to recover. Three weeks period, then we raced again on the 22nd of Jan, and then the next meeting was on the 19th of Feb. Uh, this is a good uh, growing period. The sun was out, we had good weather, we were, which was kind to us, and the, the, the grass reacted very well to this sort of treatment. And we've maintained this process over the champion season, whereby in April when we came back, three race meetings was run full on turf, and thereafter the traditional races like the Rising Sun, the July, we run split races. Now obviously the most important reason for having the poly track is to save meetings when you have these terribly inclement months, particularly October and November, you get a lot of rain, and that's to save the meetings. But it's a different kind of surface. It's not as reliant to nature as the grasses. Yes, it is. Listen, the, the, we believe the poly track is our saving grace for racing. Uh, we would have lost 13 race meetings. Th that's 13 Fridays we would have lost in the last season had it not been for the poly. Yes, we did encounter some issues at the pull-up area and presently the, the pull-up is being extended by a further 100 meters. Hopefully this will alleviate the problems that we've encountered previously. Initially it was thought that the transition between grass and poly was going to be a problem for horses, but I see that this happens all over the world wherever you watch racing there is a smooth transition from one surface to the other as long as it's not too deep and it can cause the horse's injury. Yes, absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, initially we were uh, reluctant. We thought we we're not going to get the support that we got. But the poly track has been embraced by the trainers. Uh, we, we've got a narrow track. We can only run 12. And most race meetings that are staged on the poly, we have eliminations. Now, when it comes to this particular surface, it's 122 years of racing on this track. It's quite incredible that this track is still the exact same track that Gravel started with. Yes, it is. Listen, we've been doing numerous soil testing. We've had three different companies come and explain to us and do soil testing throughout the entire track to see if there is a variance in the soil. I mean, we had a tunnel put up at that, uh, that 400 meter mark. So this, the soil has varied. But we are confident that we do not need to lift up the entire track to get this right. We're now going to be starting what we're going to call a, a top dressing program, which will be explained in detail by our track managers, which we believe will bring this track back to its natural and, and good state. So it must have been very heartwarming for you to come to the end of the season and know that you'd had minimal incidents of uh, catastrophic breakdowns, which happens in racing on any track anywhere in the world that people were actually singing the praises of Gold Circle for once with this particular track since the, the separation of the two tracks. Yeah. It's, Andrew, we are very, very pleased with our season. We are thankful that no one got injured or hurt. Horses were safe and there was a minimal amount of, of complaints uh, that came through to us. Now, while we were walking down here, you touched on a, an interesting subject and that is Scottsville because you've only got these two tracks to work with now. and. We see that there's a lot of manual labor with the, uh, the ladies planting new Kukuya plugs. You've decided to go another route as far as Scottsville is concerned. Yes, uh, Scottsville spring treatment initially we had uh, decided and agreed by the racing community to do it in two stages uh, due to the fact that uh, Gravels wasn't available to us in this period. So we decided to do the stand side track uh, from August to September and thereafter do the inside track from Sept uh, October and November. But uh, we've Looking at the soil and the, the weather pattern and so on, what we've decided to do this year is to go the one route and close Scottsville from October, in October and November and do the entire track in one go. Uh, coming back to your, your point about the Kukui plugs, yes, I'm investigating the possibility of having the plugs planted by a machine rather than the manual labor. We believe it's going to be cheaper. We believe it's going to be more consistent because the machine will actually plant it in 20 centimeters apart rather than the manual labor, which a person might be deciding to do it differently. Having a machine and having a qualified person plant it, we believe it will help us. The stampers, for want of a better way to call it, 
you see them all over the world and you wonder how much of them are actually paying attention to what they're doing what's your take on that yeah i have to 100 percent agree with you uh, during champion season i personally came around on the track and i was actually going around telling the guy listen you've matched a patch here and you missed a patch there yeah so it is <laughs> well we try our very best to try and monitor but uh, i mean you, you won't be able to go to the 800 meter mark and the 400 meter mark at the same time so we do rely on them but the track managers do monitor they have supervisors uh, you know shuddering these people to make sure that they are doing their function properly uh, the synodin that we've got here is very slow coming out of winter we have had a couple of cold days the kakuyu is bouncing back nicely we're working on it to get as much kakuyu in the track as we can because it's obviously our preferred grass there has been talk about the soil around the track, that it's maybe time to relift the track. It come at a huge cost. I don't believe that's necessary. I'm engaging on a top dressing program every three weeks. They put about five mils of silica sand. And once that's applied to the, the, the grass, we will be using mechanical methods of verti draining, hollow tining, whatever to incorporate that sand in our grain medium. It is a process, it might take us two years, three years. We then should have a nice grain medium without going through a whole reconstruction phase and it's actually seen in more maintenance sort of procedure. Uh, I think just spending someone else's money would be very easy, but I think that's irresponsible and I'd rather change the way that we manage the track. The poly track is a reality. It saved 13 meetings I'm given to understand per season, that's a lot of money. How are you enjoying working with this innovative service? Andrew, yeah, um, you know, it was, I've had a bit of experience from the older tracks when I started at Summerfeld many years back. So before we had the poly track, we had the predecessors. Um, you know, it's, it's a surface that does need a bit of, of maintenance. It's not just a, a leave and, and a prep on a race day. It all depends on your weather, what the uh, pre-race pre meeting on the race day itself. So it is quite, uh, have maintenance, although uh, it doesn't require a lot of people. It's basically a two-man team with the, the tractors and the, the tractor-drawn implements that do the prep, and then I come behind with the keg hammer to do my checks that they fall, the track falls within the specs as, as given to us by the manufacturer. And the keg hammer is yeah, for the for now for the poly track. Uh, it gives us a good indication of where the track is in terms of its, its density, its firmness. Uh, the racing surface gets uh, packed slightly firmer than the, the training centres. Obviously, the training centre, you need a bit more work and, and uh, strain put onto the horses to get them fit. Where in the surface, you want, I mean, racing, we want a faster surface, obviously, good racing. Okay, speaking to Kevin, um, his background is golf courses. His background is, uh, you know, being a qualified horticulturist. This is new technology. How does one prepare oneself for working with something that is so synthetic laid on a concrete base uh, yeah Andrew, it was quite a quite a tall uh, learning curve because no track is the same throughout the world even if it was one it's well the one at Summerfeld no, is, is quite different to to here and the biggest thing for us was to to find its its critical point and when I talk about the critical point it's its temperature um, you might have heard in the early days the jocks were complaining about kickback and we did all sorts of things to try and figure out what it was and eventually came down to surface temperature on a hot summer's day when we, we race quite often during the day. Um, the temperature, once it gets beyond 30 degrees C, then the, the, the surface starts to what I call flour. It, the, 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 the wax starts to become a bit more viscous so it can't hold the material together. And to overcome that, now we walk to the track. If we put water down, it takes the sting out of the surface and it holds the surface together and that, that you know, keeps the kickback down and depending on, on the, the weather and how, uh, um, the time of the day, it depends how much water we put down. There's no hard and fast rules with this track and that was, that's also another thing people need to, to keep in mind. It's not, well, we prep it at the beginning of the day and that's it for the rest of the day. Um, it'll be warm today, like today's weather uh, uh, conditions. We'll put water down fairly regularly because... Whoever said winning isn't everything never had to fight cancer.
South Africa's sporting community has embraced the challenge and once again, the sport of horse racing adds its voice. On Friday night, 27th October, Gravel Racecourse goes pink in support of breast cancer awareness. All funds raised will go towards building Pink Drive's mobile mammogram and educational units. When you're helping to fight cancer, winning is everything. The Pink Drive Race Meeting, Friday night, 27 October. Your world of winners is now online at www.teletrack.com. Simply subscribe to log into your account from any mobile device in South Africa and access a wide variety of content from our membership package options. Listen in via a live audio stream, catch live racing locally and internationally, or view a wide variety of Teletrack magazine shows to stay informed and updated on the go at any time. It's never been easier. Go to teletrack.com now.